Forty years ago, Cambodia experienced a genocide of unimaginable proportions. Two million people died. Now, a new film directed by Hollywood superstar Angelina Jolie has won the backing of the Cambodian establishment. The presence of the Cambodian royal family at the movie's premiere, a stamp of approval for a film about the genocide that has never happened before. A significant acknowledgement that there needs to be more public discussion about the events of that time. Yes, that espèce de sorte de sentiment de honte de, de, de se sentir coupable de n'avoir pas sauvé les autres, de protéger les autres. On n'oublie rien, mais on, on ne sait pas comment dire. I hope this doesn't bring up uh, hatred. I hope it doesn't bring up blame. I hope it just brings up discussion and and I hope that the people of this country are. Um, are proud when they see it because they see what they've survived. On the banks of the Mekong River, bursts of color, the sound of laughter. This is Phnom Penh today, full of life, bustling, Families together, young and old. Seeing all this, it's hard to imagine that just four decades ago, all seemed lost, destroyed. <laughs> In 1975, the Khmer Rouge, a radical communist movement, took power, forcing millions from the cities into the countryside. This was their year zero, an attempt to create a rural utopia. It was easy to find yourself an enemy of Angkor, as they called themselves. Practicing religion, showing emotions, or even wearing color could be a death sentence. In four years, over two million people were killed, a quarter of the population. In 1979, weakened by infighting, the Khmer Rouge were driven from power by invading troops from neighboring Vietnam. Forty years later, a new film about those times, First They Killed My Father, is breaking new ground. There have been films made about the genocide before, but not like this. It's funded by one of the world's biggest content distributors, Netflix, for a global audience. But it's filmed entirely in Cambodia, with Cambodian actors in the Khmer language. Why? Because it's directed by Hollywood superstar Angelina Jolie. She's had a deep connection with this country for almost 20 years, since she first made a film here. It's where she adopted her first child, a Cambodian boy. She's even been given Cambodian citizenship. I thought, what story, what story do I feel is really important to tell? And I felt that this war that happened 40 years ago and, and what happened to these people was not uh, properly understood. And, and not just for the world, but for the people of the country. I felt that I wanted them to be able to reflect on it in a way um, that, that they could absorb. This film is graphic, detailed, and personal. It's based on the true story of Luang Ong, who was five years old when the brutal rule of the Khmer Rouge began. She managed to survive, but her mother, father, and two of her siblings did not. And in a country where almost every family suffered under the regime, 
The filmmakers hope this will resonate and encourage people to speak more freely about their deep personal pain. Right in the centre of the capital, Toll Slain, also known as S21, was a high school that became a prison. Inmates were stripped, suffocated, interrogated, beaten and electrocuted here. Now it's a museum. Foreign tourists from all over the world come here to learn. But you don't see many Cambodians here. Some of the local people I've spoken to say they don't want to be reminded of what happened here. There are thousands of pictures taken of each prisoner as they arrived. Each of them would have had families, a life. And this is the only way we can now remember them. Over 12,000 people are estimated to have come through these doors. Only a handful left again. I think of all the photographs, it's the ones where they're smiling, which make me feel most sick. Because we now know what happened to them. They would have had some idea of what would have happened to them just doesn't fit what's actually going on in this place or what went on. They just look happy. Thank you, lady. Thank you. It's so good to see yeah, you. Chung Mei did survive S21. At 86, he's one of the last still alive. He comes back here every day to share his story with one person at a time. Like so many others, he was accused of being a spy for the Americans. As a mechanic, he was useful to the Khmer Rouge, and they kept him alive, just barely. Which one Chung Mai's room? He takes me to see his cell, where he was known as number 22. <laughs> The scars are still visible. ហើមពូចឹងយើងដេកថាចេះអត់បានទេយើង <coughs> He was lucky to survive. Now he's made it his duty to repeat his story over and over as a tribute to the thousands who didn't. He wants to make sure every single person who walks through the doors of the museum understand what happened here. Rithi Pan was just 11 years old when the Khmer Rouge swept to power. He lost his whole family. He's now arguably the country's most influential artist and produced Angelina Jolie's new film. The Oscar-nominated filmmaker says this is a country that has trouble dealing with the past. 
Il y a cette espèce de sorte de sentiment de honte de, de, de se sentir coupable de n'avoir pas sauvé les autres, de protéger les autres. On n'oublie rien, mais on, on ne sait pas comment dire. Et mais après, la vie continue. Quand la vie commence à aller un peu mieux, c'est là que les fantômes viennent et hantent et vous hantent. Et c'est pourquoi euh, le travail des mémoires, le, le travail des mémoires est un travail essentiel. C'est un travail qui vous pacifie. C'est un travail qui rend les, les, les fantômes pacifiés, pacifiés même les fantômes. And there are so many ghosts in this country. On the outskirts of the capital, the anonymous dead. They call them the killing fields. And these mass graves exist all over the country. A favorite mantra of the regime was, to keep you is no benefit, to destroy you, no loss. Some victims were shot dead, others buried alive, and children They were beaten to death. This is yet another mass grave where more than a hundred victims were killed, mostly women and children. And this over here, it's almost unimaginable, but they had a killing tree. And now there are just these colorful beads, peace offerings to the victims. So what has been done to bring those responsible to justice? A UN-backed court was set up in Cambodia. Hundreds of millions have been spent so far, though only four officials have gone to trial. A deliberate decision to only try those at the very top of the Khmer Rouge. Further funding for the tribunals is now in jeopardy, and it's unlikely there'll be any more prosecutions. But some of those who suffered say a tribunal is not the only way to heal. They say what's needed is to keep speaking up. Me taire, c'est aussi d'accepter que ceux qui sont morts, ils sont morts pour rien. Ils sont rien. Si je me tais, ils sont rien. Ce sont que les gens qui sont disparus, peut-être. Alors, je n'ai pas envie qu'ils meurent pour rien. Ce sont pas des gens rien, ce sont des gens avec toute leur histoire, toute leur dignité. Euh, restaurer leur dignité, c'est restaurer ma propre dignité. Respecter ces morts, c'est respecter mon histoire. This is the biggest film premiere this country has ever seen. And the presence of a superstar like Angelina Jolie has brought the world's attention here. The film screening at one of Cambodia's world-famous ancient temples is a deliberate display of the approval it has at the highest level of Cambodian society. The presence of the king and queen of Cambodia is highly symbolic. This kind of domestic support and backing of a film about the genocide has never happened before here in Cambodia. For Angelina Jolie, This is a passion project. This film is, in a way, my way of saying thank you to Cambodia. Because you see, Cambodia changed my life. The film is being screened in Cambodia seven months before it's released internationally. School children and victims sit side by side. A generation who know this story all too well and a new generation willing to hear it. So I hope this doesn't bring up uh, hatred. I hope it doesn't bring up blame. I hope it just brings up discussion and, and I hope that the people of this country are, um, are proud when they see it because they see what they've survived and, and I think it sheds light on what it is to be Cambodian and uh, a lot of the, the beauty of um, the love of the family. Do you think, though, this nation is, is ready for that? It's, it's, it's I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I do. The hope is 
this film will make it easier for the country to talk about its past. Some have already found the courage to do so. Prak Korn lives in the countryside. His weathered face shows the hard life he has lived. The 65-year-old now sells bananas for a living. When it comes time to talking about his past, though, he's ashamed to be seen. He wants to meet us in a remote pagoda. Before he was a farmer, he was a torturer at the infamous Tol Slang prison that I visited in Phnom Penh. <laughs> What was going through your mind? So they were screaming, begging, asking you to stop? Right. Did you feel guilty? During that time, he did not uh, consider he was uh, guilty. And now? Hi, hello. Hello, Dang Nam Yen, Kum Ho. Man, Dang Nam Now he exactly you know he's guilty. Do you suffer? Ta bom min ka chi chap nam kluon ni. Kum Ho, Kum Ho, Kum Ho. It's been 40 years since the events he describes, and he calls himself a victim too. But does he think he should have been punished? Prakorn tells me the past still haunts him. He feels shame every day. He says he often talks to his children about his past. But it's difficult for them to believe that their 64-year-old father, now a grandfather, could have committed the crimes he did. After the film premiere, Angelina Jolie has come to hear from people who have seen the movie. She listens as one by one they speak. The old share their stories. A lifetime of emotion is released. I realize how difficult it is for them to open up. The pain still so present, like it happened yesterday. How do you think this film will help the younger generation? When you hear her speaking, you see her tears and pain. What do you feel your responsibility is? What is your reaction? Well, to that question, my responsibility would be to pass it on to a way longer generation and to show them what are the devastation, the struggle they have been through, the pain, 
and in order for that and to avoid the next one that might could have happened. Do you think it, it, it's hard for them to open up as a society, Cambodians, they don't like to really talk about their feelings or, or the pain, do you think that um, it's difficult for them to talk to the younger people about what's happened to them? In my opinion, I don't think they, they feel they don't want to talk. They really want to talk. They, want, they, really, they really want to re reveal what they have been through. But the, the problem is how the listener um, responds to them. For many Cambodians, this is a first. To finally be speaking to strangers about very private, painful memories. The classical Apsara dance. Each move a symbol of the past, present and future. It goes back thousands of years to the Angkorian era, a mixture of Hindu and Buddhist mythology. In the past, it was only ever taught at the royal courts. But the dance almost vanished under the Khmer Rouge, and only a few of those who knew the art survived. Now, it's slowly making a comeback, with a new generation keen to revive the past. Another thing almost lost is being restored, all the more precious for having been saved. What does that mean in 1,800,000 deaths? C'est un chiffre, c'est un artiste, c'est un statistique, mais ça n'exprime rien. Pour moi, c'est 1 million 800 mille vies différentes, euh, différentes histoires d'amour, différentes euh, personnes, visages, euh, sensibilités. Et en fait, il faut faire 1 million 800 mille films si on veut vraiment rendre hommage à tous ces morts. The many Cambodians I've met and spoken to say they're slowly restoring pride in their culture and finding strength in their survival. This nation's people are clearly still haunted by the events of 40 years ago and are still looking for a way to heal. I think they'll always search for answers and need to remember. But they don't want the brutality of the past and the need to remember it, to define them.